So again, uh, thank you everyone for joining me uh, this evening. Again, this is Mike Sarnowski uh, with Special Olympics Maryland. Uh, the uh, session tonight for heads of delegations is specifically on or related to the Athlete on Snow and Time Trials Weekend. Uh, we have an additional um, head of delegation uh, webinar in uh, a week or two that will go over things more related to winter games. I do have one slide on a couple additional things coming up. Um, uh, but uh, uh, our main focus here is on the um, on snow and time trials weekend. Uh, that said, we will also be sending these slides out, uh, probably go out tomorrow morning, uh, and the recording of the session will be posted on my SOMD, or a link to the recording will be posted there, uh, so folks can uh, uh, go uh, watch it or skim through it if they um, uh, were unable to join us tonight. So, Mike. Yes. When is the next meeting going to be for HOD? Uh, if you can hold on. Uh, I don't remember, but I have it on a slide. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Because um, I had told you I was going to be out of the country, so I need to make sure that right. either Vicki or Callista is going to be able to do it. Right. Uh, yeah, it's um, – I think the week after uh, the – or towards the end of the week afterwards. But anyhow, it's on, the, it's on one of the slides. I, I just don't – Okay. Know. All right. Great, thanks. Sure. Um, anyhow, uh, so this uh, weekend coming up is our Athletes on Snow and Time Trials Weekend. Uh, Saturday, uh, February 6th, is the On Snow Training. We'll talk a little bit about uh, what each sport has available for each of those uh, for uh, that day. Uh, key is that this is optional. Saturday is optional. It is not required, uh, but it's very strongly encouraged, um, uh, regardless of the sport, whether it's the alpine, uh, because you will get a uh, it, uh, most uh, alpine programs probably have not had the opportunity to set um, uh, race courses or for athletes to run gates, uh, and so they'll have that opportunity here. Uh, plus, also, uh, and that'll be prior to the um, uh, the required time trials uh, and for snowshoe, um, uh, some practice on starts and such. So it's strongly encouraged, uh, but it is not required. Uh, and registration will open at 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about checking in and registration and such in a few minutes. Uh, then on Sunday is the time trials. This is required. It is mandatory uh, for every athlete and unified partner with one exception, as is noted there on the screen. Um, uh, basically, if the athlete or partner does not attend uh, the time trials and uh, compete in their time trial on the 7th, they will not be able to attend Winter Games. Um, the only exception to that is the Glide and Super Glide uh, because the uh, time trials for that event are done on site at Winter Games uh, in, um, uh, on Monday, and then the divisioning is done following that. So all other athletes or unified partners need to attend the time trials in order to be able to attend or compete at Winter Games. Uh, if an athlete or partner doesn't, if, if they uh, uh, attend and they uh, compete in their time trial and they disqualify, um, uh, have two bad runs in, um, on Alpine uh, or otherwise DQ in Snowshoe, um, they can participate in Winter Games for a participation ribbon. That said, if time allows, this is not a promise, uh, if time allows and uh, it seems that it would be a worthwhile endeavor when possible, um, the teams will offer at least one more uh, opportunity for that athlete to, um, to try to be successful in their time trial. Um, again, that's not a promise. That can't always be done, um, but uh, uh, that would be the case. That said, um, you know, if somebody's running late and they miss and the, the courses are already taken down, uh, that wouldn't be something that we could accommodate at that point. Um, but again, on Sunday, registration opens uh, our check-in opens at 8 o'clock. Uh, the costs for uh, lift tickets and lunches and rentals are charged back to the areas for this event. Uh, you see the prices there. Lift tickets alone, if you just get a lift ticket, you already have your own. This is, and that, is, of course, applies to Alpine. Um, uh, if uh, you're just getting a lift ticket, it's $20. Uh, if it's a lift plus a rental, it's $30. And then for lunch, it's $10. You don't have to uh, ask for lunch tickets if you don't want them. If you're bringing your own lunches, I know several uh, counties do that, and that's fine. 
Um, uh, and uh, this is not something also where you have to pay it on site. This is all billed back or the funds are transferred back uh, at headquarters uh, from the area's accounts. Uh, but just be aware that that is part of the, um, uh, the requirement or, or part of the process there. Um, what I do need everyone to do, uh, by Thursday night, it says 11 o'clock reality, first thing in the morning on Friday, uh, I'll be pulling this info, uh, but is for any lift, rental, or lunch tickets to please complete this survey. Um, it's uh, one submission for each sport via SurveyMonkey. So the head coach for each sport can go ahead and do this, or the head of delegation can go in and do it twice. This is only to have the lift tickets, uh, rental tickets, or lunch tickets ready. Um, the actual registration for time trials uh, is handled through GMS. If you, um, and it's a very quick survey. It basically asks how many of each type of ticket do you need for each day after you identify what county you are, what your name is, and um, uh, what sport you're representing. If for some reason you don't get this done, this does not mean that your athletes can't come to winter to uh, the time trials and therefore can't come to winter games. It may mean that you have to wait a while while we go and get another batch of lunch tickets or meal tickets or whatever. Um, we'll use this information to um, uh, get the, uh, the tickets for, uh, from Whitetail and have them available uh, for folks on site uh, and actually prepackaged by your county. Um, and then anybody who didn't submit them will have some little supply there, but we may run out of one ticket of a particular type, and you may have to wait a while for us to go get somebody to go down and pick up additional ones. So please, it saves everybody a ton of time. We have not done this in the past, at least not this way. So um, we're going to try this new. This will also be in the uh, email with that link that will go out with the slides that will go out to all the areas as well, because we know not every area is on the call tonight. Uh, so the check-in process. The, uh, we'll show you on a map uh, in a few slides where the control center is. It's the same place it's been for the time trials uh, above Starbucks. Uh, where it's been there for uh, many years, ever since we started doing this, I believe. But one head coach for each sport can come to check in. Or if you have a head of delegation who wants to pick them up for both, that's fine. Do not bring, please, do not bring your entire delegation through that control center. And please don't even have them walk through there just to get to where the their seating uh, that looks out the big bay window. Um, I'll show you the, the best way to go in, but that place is congested enough just trying to do the control center. Uh, unfortunately, it's the only place that's available on a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, luckily, when we have winter games, we now have a space uh, that's much uh, more convenient in terms of being able to leave stuff in place um, uh, for, the, uh, um, for the control center. But please, please, please do not bring uh, folks through. We'll have signage up. We'll have some sections roped off. But people seem to just ignore that half the time. Uh, and so please spread that to your delegations to not walk through that area. Um, anyway, so uh, you'll come. You'll pick up the, the tickets if you've told us ahead of time how many you've, you need. Uh, we'll have those uh, prepackaged for you. I will warn you, if you're the first group there on Saturday morning, we may not have your Saturday ones ready for you right at that time because we'll be picking those up. Uh, first thing Saturday morning, but um, very few areas have come in at 8 o'clock on Saturday to do their pickup. Um, then uh, on Sunday, so uh, you come and pick it up, we'll give you the tickets and you can go on on Saturday. You just pick up your stuff uh, and you're good to go. Uh, on Sunday, we will also be giving you uh, the bibs for Sunday morning, which will have labels on there for each athlete or, or unified partner and their events. In addition, we will give Snowshoe the uh, a couple reports, their time sequence reports as well. Uh, we'll do those for Alpine for winter games, but the way that time trials are run uh, for Alpine, which you'll see in a few slides, it really doesn't, it, it's a waste of, of effort to go and put those together uh, for Alpine. It really doesn't serve any significant purpose. Uh, whereas for Snowshoe, given the way time trials are done there, it does make sense to do it. So um, we're not slating Alpine and doing it this way. Uh, again, don't bring your delegation through there. Don't have your coaches or whatever walk through the center uh, and such. Uh, we'll open starting, again, at 8 o'clock each morning. Um, uh, and then if you're renting skis, uh, 
whether an athlete or a uh, partner or a coach, um, be sure to uh, complete. You'll have to uh, complete and sign a release. We should have those in a PDF format by tomorrow evening, in which case we will send them out to you uh, so you can get uh, uh, for any uh, minor uh, athletes who are either minors or who uh, do not have self-guardianship, um, you can get their signatures there. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, one other thing, uh, back up here for the survey for the requesting tickets and such, two things with that. One, um, you're requesting for everyone in your delegation or for that sport. So it's athletes, it's partners, it's coaches. If you have volunteers who need a lift ticket or a rental or a meal ticket, uh, it's everybody. Uh, you're putting them all in at once. I don't care whether, it, if you put in a number of, I'm making a number up here, if you put in a number of 30, I don't need to know that 20 of those are athletes and five are partners and so on down the line. Just put the number in. Secondly, with this, as has been the case before, uh, if you have any, any lift tickets or any of these tickets that you don't use, uh, you can turn them back in. Uh, typically, we say by 1 o'clock. Uh, might be able to stretch it to 2 o'clock uh, each day, and um, you won't be charged uh, if you turn them back in at that point. Um, so uh, if you're not sure, if, uh, whatever, um, take it, and then you can turn it back in, and then we'll turn it back into whitetail. So sorry, I forgot to mention that before. Um, so, uh, next, uh, thank you to those who in GMS went ahead and entered their folks into uh, the um, time trial events. I have since gone through and uh, advanced everybody into their time trial events. I'm now going through, um, or, and hopefully we'll finish this tonight, verifying that at least as best I can, everybody's in the right time trial event. When I send the rosters out tomorrow evening, be sure to check that as well, just to be sure. Um, luckily, at time trials, it's easy enough to add a, uh, um, a properly registered athlete, but seems, who seems to be missing uh, or not in the right time trial event, it's easy enough to move that around. We, that's not to say we're going to add any new athletes or any new unified partners uh, there, but for those who are properly registered, we can adjust with that. Um, and then as a reminder, coaches will... Um, uh, you have the opportunity to update your events following time trials um, uh, by, as is noted there towards the bottom, by uh, 8 o'clock on February 9th. Um, if you, it's easy enough, uh, the, what, if you're going to change the event or whatever uh, for your, one of your athletes, you can only do so if you have a time trial score for the event you're moving that person into. So. If the athlete, so if you get up there, and let's say that you have somebody, Alpine athlete, who you registered for um, the intermediate level, and uh, they get up, you, you haven't had a whole lot of time on snow, or um, uh, they haven't had a chance to run gates, you get there and you realize they're just not ready for that, you can have them do the novice uh, time trial that day as well. Um, Simple enough. Just go. Uh, there's your, uh, but check this out ahead of time because you're, um, uh, you'll need to have them go up while the novice course is open. Uh, you will see the schedule on that in a few slides. But for Alpine, just go with the rest of the delegation to the course at the designated time for the delegation and tell the official there, hey, we're having this athlete run or this partner run um, uh, this time trial as well. You can go the other direction too. There, you put them in novice and they're um, going gangbusters and you want to have them try the, um, uh, the intermediate or uh, advanced time trial. For Snowshoe, uh, similarly, um, Ron can insert Ron Freeman, who's our director of Snowshoe. You can go directly to him uh, on Saturday morning or if you're there on Friday, uh, and he can add them in uh, to another division or if there's an open slot from a scratch or whatever, uh, just let him know that uh, you want uh, your athlete to run this additional event. Um, so, but it's critical to do that ahead of time or to have that set because otherwise, if you don't have a time trial for the athlete or the partner, uh, they're not going to be able to be into, in the event that you want to move them to. Um, send those changes into your uh, area's regional sports director. Their contacts are at the end of the last slide. Hopefully you, you know who most of who they are. Um, 
you have to send them in that way because currently areas are locked out of making changes in GMS. GMS is our games management system. Uh, it's the software uh, for uh, registration. So areas can't go in and make those changes themselves. So let's talk about snowshoe. Uh, for the athletes on snow, that's on Saturday. Um, while registration will open at 8, the areas available for snowshoe are starting at 9. Um, and uh, it's an opportunity, as, as they have done in the past, the uh, folks, the um, folks in the maintenance uh, department at Whitetail will create a course for us. They'll groom it. Uh, they do a really, really nice job. Um, so they'll have that all groomed for us on Saturday. Uh, Ron uh, and his team will set up some lanes. They aren't going to be full 100 meter or 200, well, yeah, full 100 meter lanes, um, but they'll at least be enough that you can get a good start going. Uh, and they'll also set up some relay exchange zones in the areas where the relay exchanges will happen. Uh, in fact, they're going to be out there marking out, measuring out, um, and putting some markers on the side for all the distances um, uh, for two weeks from then uh, for winter games. Uh, so they'll have everything available at that point. They also can't promise it, but assuming they've got everything covered, can uh, uh, do some starts for you if you want to have your athletes uh, doing starts. Um, but uh, with that, it is, this isn't something where you can go and drop your athletes off and you as a coach can leave. You're there monitoring, supervising your athletes, and actually supervising the training of the athletes. Uh, Ron and his team are not actually doing any uh, additional training on site uh, with folks. Then for snowshoe, for the time trials the next day, again, all snowshoe athletes and unified partners are required to attend uh, in order to go on to winter games. Uh, so on Sunday, um, again, registration is open at 8. Uh, snowshoe venue opens for warm-ups at 9. During that time, Ron and his team will probably still be marking lanes. Um, unfortunately, in order to make the snowshoe venue work, uh, the, uh, the folks at Whitetail groom it each night, so there's nothing they can do the night before uh, to try to uh, move that along. So you're welcome to use the area. Just stay out of their way uh, when they're marking lanes and such. Then at, uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, we'll have the, um, the time trials uh, where the athletes will go 400 meters. That will serve as a time trial for the 400, the 800, the 1600, the 5K. I don't think we have anybody in the 1600 or the 5K, and the 4x4. Four four. Uh, and I don't think right now we have anybody in the four, any teams in the 4x4, four four, unified or traditional. So um, if somebody meant to add them in, uh, please let us know. Um, before going through and double checking everything, it looks like we'll have eight divisions uh, for 30 racers in there. Then at 10:45, we have the 50 meter time trials. That is for the 25 meter race and the 50 meter race. Uh, there's 14 divisions and 53 racers. If there is an athlete who, for whatever reason, is unable to complete the 50 meter, they can only do a 25. We will at the end of that block. Uh, do a 25-meter time trial uh, for folks. Uh, I don't know that we've had to do that in the past, but that option is there if you have an athlete who uh, is not yet able to, even to, to do a 50-meter race. We have that option. Uh, then at uh, 11.30, we have the 100-meter time trials, and the 100-meter uh, serves as the time trial for the 100-meter race, the 200, the 4x1, and the 4x2. Um, so with that, and we do have 4x1 and 4x2 teams, um, that means everybody on your team must complete that time trial. Even your alternates. We won't be able to put an alternate in if they haven't done the time trial. So uh, even your unified partners that are coming or your other athletes, if they aren't already getting a 100 meter or doing that time trial for another event that they're in, Make sure that they're added into that, and again, Ron can handle that on site. Um, um, and we've got 21 divisions or 82 racers at this point that we're looking at. As you maybe can tell from that, our plan is to go with, uh, for time trials, is to go with four lanes uh, or four racers abreast starting uh, simultaneously. Um, at the competition at Winter Games, if space permits, if there's enough coverage, we may go to five lanes, but for this we're just doing four. Uh, and then we estimate around 1 o'clock that time trials will be over with. Um, that said, I should, uh, as is also pointed down, out, down towards the bottom, the, as soon as the 400 meter is done, 
and they get and Ron gets his team repositioned, they're going to start the 50 meter. Uh, so have your folks ready, have them there um, uh, and uh, ready to go a little early um, so that we can crank through. We, and we also will be having for each of the time trial races, there will be a scheduled start time as we've done before. So uh, there will be uh, the typically done in 15 meter increments. So you'll know with the 400 meter whether you're, you're, that race is starting at 10 or 10.15 or 10.30. Um, but be ready, be there a little early. Uh, we will not penalize an athlete who isn't on site uh, if we're starting a race early. We'll hold that race. That said, if the athlete's not there when it's scheduled to start, that athlete will be disqualified at that point. Um, so really, uh, we had an issue last time with uh, folks who uh, took care of the uh, folks over to um, uh, the main lodge, and I don't know whether they were getting something to eat or doing whatever. Um, and then they did get back in time, but uh, uh, the, the group had gotten ahead of schedule, and uh, it would just be helpful to have you there. Really recommend for snowshoe folks, wait until you're done doing your races before going over for lunch. Uh, you'll be done by 1 o'clock, uh, possibly earlier than that, um, and uh, uh, so uh, that would be very helpful there. Um, let's see, for Alpine, on Saturday, the athletes on snow portion, um, it's an opportunity for coaches to work with their athletes. Again, so your coach is responsible for supervising. However, that said, Matt uh, Otwell, who is our head of Alpine, and his team will set up on Saturday, will set up one course. It will probably be on uh, Stalker. Uh, we're not 100% certain of that. Uh, we'll let you know that morning. Um, but it will be an intermediate course uh, that they'll set up on Saturday. We're only able to set up a single course uh, for folks to go through. Uh, that said, also, uh, there will be an opportunity for uh, if you have uh, athletes or, or coaches, for that matter, who would benefit from working with some clinicians. Most of Met's um, officials are PSIA, Professional Ski Instructors of America, are PSIA certified instructors. They teach at Liberty and such, uh, and um, many of them are very good at teaching um, also uh, gate running, uh, which uh, not just regular skiing. Um, so they have two sessions set up, um, one at 10 o'clock, one at 1 o'clock. Um, if you have an athlete or someone who would be beneficial or would benefit from that, you can take them over. They're asking the plan right now is to meet 15 minutes prior to that start time um, at the central snow gun. It's a big gun. You can't miss it right in the middle of the bowl that's, in the, um, uh, that's right there. Uh, that said, just as I mentioned with snowshoe here, this is not an opportunity for you to just turn your athlete over and walk away. You need to be with them uh, in case something happens with the clinician or whether he or she needs to deal with something else. You need to be there with them. It is not an opportunity for, for the coach to go uh, get a hot chocolate and kick back and relax. You need to be out there. You're not, you're not ceding the responsibility. You're getting the expertise from the clinicians to work with your athletes. Um, and then when you check in on Saturday, we'll confirm uh, the exact location of, uh, of uh, where to meet. Um, but again, it should be at the, uh, right by the snow gun. Then for the time trials on Saturday, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, on Sunday rather, uh, they, there are two time trials or two time trial courses that will be used. One will be for novice, which will obviously be for novice. Another one will be an intermediate time trial, and that's being used for uh, athletes and partners in the intermediate and advanced events. Uh, they'll both use the same course. So if you do want to move somebody up from intermediate to advanced or down from advanced to intermediate, they've already got the time trial done because that's what they would have done for their original event. Um, again, I mentioned before, Glide Super Glide will be at Winter Games. There is no staging. Uh, unlike at Winter Games, as we've had, for those of you who've been there in the past, there is no staging tent. Rather, your area uh, you take all of your athletes and unified partners, everybody who has to get a time trial, up to the start of the race uh, at um, your designated time, which you'll see on the next, um, on the next slide. After that, uh, or at other times during that time that you're there, it's open skiing. You can do your own training with your athletes anywhere on the mountain. It's pretty, uh, obviously, use your judgment uh, in terms of what's safe. Uh, but uh, you're, in essence, on your own. So for... Um, uh, this is essentially the same schedule that we had last year. 
Um, the numbers have been updated. And again, I have not validated all these numbers, so they may be off by one or two. Um, and again, you'll get this, uh, this slide deck. But so at 930, um, at the intermediate and advanced course, uh, St. Mary's County will go, and over at the novice course, Harford, Cecil, Lower Shore, and St. Mary's will go. Uh, I put in Lower Shore at 10 o'clock. That was your time last year. Uh, currently, there is, there is no one registered for an inter in from Lower Shore for an intermediate advanced unless we've made an error. Uh, but that's your slotted time that you can go over there for that. Uh, so, anyway, so you can read through all that uh, at your leisure. A um, couple points that you see on the side there. Um, uh, report with your coaches to that area about 10 minutes prior. If there's still racers going through, just keep them off to the side. Uh, I haven't checked the weather in the last few hours, but last time I did check, it wasn't supposed to be brutal or anything like that. It's supposed to actually be pretty nice. should be good skiing weather. Um, when you get up to the start line, uh, you, so St. Mary's County, you have 18 skiers that need to go through uh, at 930. They will go through in bib number order. So um, whatever their order is, that's the sequence that they'll go through. Um, you will get uh, automatically two trials. You do not have to take the second trial if you don't want to uh, or the athlete doesn't want to. If they get a good time on their first attempt, that's fine. Uh, it's always good. I mean, I'm of the opinion it's always good uh, to get that extra practice in, uh, if nothing else, but that's your call on that. Um, let's see. The... Uh, uh, that, uh, so the notes there really aren't there. The one other, uh, the one thing to note there uh, is notice that the novice course is done uh, before the lunch break. So if you have anybody who needs to do the novice course, get them out there by that time because the course will be broken down. Um, for those of you who have your intermediate advanced uh, time trials later in the afternoon after lunch, have your athletes out on the snow, and you can get a sense of whether they need to do the time trial. I would do the novice time trial. If there is any question in your mind, have them do it. It can't hurt. Uh, um, not that I want to overwhelm the novice folks, but it's a, it's, it can serve as a warm-up, if nothing else. But if there's any question about whether one of your athletes needs the novice, take them and have them go through it. Uh, I mentioned before about Glide Super Glide is at Winter Games. Uh, and then you can free ski. Uh, and then it, just as I mentioned with the relays that uh, even your alternates need to have a time trial, same thing goes here uh, with any of your unified stuff. Your alternates need to have gone through the, um, uh, the time trial in order to be used as an alternate. Um, should also point out while we're talking about a little bit about events, uh, and this was discussed at the, um, the Alpine coaches training that was held at headquarters back on um, uh, at the beginning of January. Uh, Matt is looking at uh, adjusting the schedule somewhat, uh, but he couldn't do it until he got the uh, pretty good numbers in terms of how many people are in each event. He will share that information. Uh, we'll, we'll provide that. We'll have a handout if we need to for everybody uh, on Sunday morning. If uh, you look at the schedule and you want to shift the event that an athlete is in, uh, don't don't use this to shift their level. That would that's just that's absurd. Um, but if you want to shift their the event that they're in, so maybe they're doing a unified um, slalom and you want them to do a unified super G instead, or whatever the case may be, um, then you can make that change by that change deadline and use the, the guide that uh, Matt is providing or that we'll provide there with that. We wish we could give you better information prior to that, but the reason that the schedule needs to be looked at is because things have been shifting, um, uh, not always consistently, quite honestly. So it's not like there's a 100% clear pattern of which way to go. So uh, with the competition registration deadline last Thursday, we're pulling the information together so he can make those decisions and we'll share them with you then. And of course, as I noticed, as I noted, you will have the opportunity to adjust your athletes' events accordingly. Um, so uh, while we're down there, um, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the facility, uh, this is a halfway decent drawing of the um, uh, of Whitetail's main 
area. Uh, the main road is down, if you can see where my cursor is, is down off this end here. Snowshoe is, uh, you hang a right at, the, at this little area here. We'll see the snowshoe venue in another slide in a minute. Uh, but here's the main lodge and such. For the on snow uh, and time trials weekend, the um, registration and control center is again above Starbucks. Starbucks is this area here on the bottom floor, and then there's a uh, um, uh, an area up above. Uh, that's where we'll be checking in again. Please, only the head coach. You're not going to walk away with so much stuff that you need somebody to help carry it, help help you carry it. Only the head coach don't have people walk through there. Um, the area where most people like to sit and watch uh, or lay their stuff out is on the second floor above this main area here. You can get to that by going in and there is a stairwell uh, right here over uh, here at the where the, uh, the entrance to the food court is. Um, and you can just take that up and that takes you right up into that area there. That's the way Please have your folks go. Do not have them go up and walk through the uh, control center. Um, I can't tell you how, how much of a problem that becomes for us. Um, not that this matters for you guys, but the volunteer registration that morning uh, will be on the second floor above the food court. Um, and then the food court, of course, is on the lower level here. Um, you'll get your ticket. Uh, there's standard. Um, uh, there's a, I don't know what it is, but it'll be a blue plate special. It'll be different each day that the, it'll cover. Or you can get a deli sandwich and I think a side and a drink, or you can get a hamburger or a hot dog or something along those lines. It spells it out on there. But you, you, it's, there's choices that you have um, uh, for there. Um, also, uh, there is no special reserved parking for folks. Um, there is some hand, there's limited handicap parking uh, up in this area here. Uh, if you have handicap, legal handicap tags, you can utilize that. Um, uh, but park pretty much anywhere that they designate for you. Uh, we also will have a shuttle running for the snowshoe athletes. Um, typically now they've been picking folks up. They have been picking people up in the front here, but it seems to be working better that they're picking them up along the side. Uh, uh, right over here on this side of the parking lot. Uh, if there's any change with that, we'll let you know that morning. Uh, then these are the courses. Anybody who's gone through one of the Alpine, uh, either the Alpine live training or the preseason webinar, this slide's the same. Um, the plan as we know it right now is that the, uh, the novice time trial course will be on velvet somewhere along here. I can't tell you exactly where. Uh, and that the intermediate will be along Stalker. If that changes, we will let you know that morning when you're checking in. Um, we do not have on Saturday or Sunday access to all the other courses or all the other trails for us to set courses. Of course, if they have snow and you want to go and take your athletes and uh, ski on those courses, you're certainly welcome to. The, the lift ticket that you get lets you go pretty much anywhere. Um, uh, that's that. The, um, while we're looking at this down, this is, this is a, um, a good um, uh, aerial shot or aerial drawing. Here's that main lodge we were just looking at. Um, over here, uh, where it says mountain operations, this is the snowshoe venue uh, here. So the, um, typically, the shuttle bus will pick folks up here in this small lot, bring them down, and drop them off uh, at the mountain operations building. Um, should have put it on the slide, but it neglected to, just as was the case last year. You cannot park in the mountain operations area. Uh, we had to have a lot of people go out last year and move their cars because they had taken over that area. They, Whitetail does a, is incredibly generous in what they give us and how they work with us. They've asked particularly on this Saturday, Sunday, to not have all these vehicles parked in this area. It's not safe, and they can't get their folks in and out as they need to. Uh, you can park anywhere else. Typically, if you get there early in the morning, <coughs> excuse me, this section of the parking lot, the main lot here, is not filled, uh, and you can park there, and that's an easy walk there, uh, down there. If you have a lot of equipment that you need to drop off, I'm sure that they can accommodate that, but don't use that as an excuse 
to unload your vehicle and then leave it there, which happened last year as well. Um, please drop your stuff off and then uh, go back and park. And again, the shuttle will be going back and forth. Um, and then similarly, again, you should, you've seen this before if you've been to any of the, uh, or participated in any of the webinars, this is the snowshoe venue. Um, they will be having, unlike Alpine where I said there is no staging, snowshoe will have an actual staging operation uh, in, the, um, in, the main, in the mountain ops building uh, as it has in the past. Um, they'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to come in and uh, um, uh, they'll have some space available for folks to put out some chairs. Please keep in mind that we've got, uh, uh, I don't know how many offhand, more than 100 athletes and additional folks with those athletes that are there that are trying to use the space. Don't be a hog. Don't spread out your stuff any more than is absolutely necessary so that folks can get in. In addition, um, you guys that have to find, I think people have been very good with this. If Ron or one of his team members ask you to move so that people can get through, um, they'll do that. The primary purpose here uh, in uh, this building is to do the staging and get the athletes out on the snow. The primary purpose is not to have a space for all the delegations to sit. They're happy to accommodate that to the extent that it's possible, but they need to be able to meet that primary function of staging the athletes and getting them out. Um, otherwise, there's no purpose for us being there. So, um, But again, folks have been pretty good with that. Uh, what else? Some additional items. Uh, John, as you had mentioned or you had asked, the next webinar is Thursday, February 11th. There's the link there. Um, also, for those uh, folks who are on the call for um, uh, who are also involved directly with any of the sports, uh, we have the Alpine pregames webinar on the 9th. Uh, at 7 and the snowshoe immediately following that on the 9th at 8. Um, you should have your head coach participate in those. If he or she is not available, as uh, may be the case for John, if he's still out of town or out of the country, I guess it is actually, um, during that time, have someone else sit in and share the information. Uh, and then the other piece of information, which everybody seems to want to know, what is the dance theme? The dance theme this year will be hoedown. Um, so, uh, country, plaid, whatever, overalls, whatever uh, you think is uh, um, appropriate. Again, that, uh, that dance is at Winter Games. Not, it's not part of the time trial weekend, but everybody wants to know what it is. Um, here are the contacts for your, um, uh, your regional sport directors. Uh, for those of you who haven't, for whatever reason, been totally in the loop on stuff, we now have um, uh, four regions where folks are working. Uh, Nick Anderson uh, will still uh, has the Eastern Shore as he's had uh, for some time and still holds on to Anne Arundel County. Uh, Natalia Stefan joined us uh, back at the beginning of January, uh, and she handles Southern Maryland with Charles Calvert and St. Mary's County, and then also sort of Central Maryland. We're calling, for lack of a better term, uh, Howard County and Prince George's County. There, Melissa Anger is still with us out in Western Maryland. Uh, basically Carroll County West plus Montgomery County. Uh, and then in the Baltimore area, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, uh, Sam Hodep is with us for another week. Sadly, uh, he is moving on to uh, go back to teaching. Uh, great for teaching. It's something he'll, he'll thrive at, uh, but he'll be leaving us at the end of the week. And Courtney Brooks came on board at the beginning of January and uh, will be taking on uh, the responsibilities of working with Baltimore City, amongst other things. So that said, um, that's what I wanted to be sure that we shared. Uh, open it up now for any questions that anybody has. Um, to, uh, just go, anything. Mike. Yeah. Mary knew. Oh, good. Um, you got in, too, so that's good. <laughs> I did, with your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Brett uh, is, Brett, my son Brett is the head coach for Alpine, and he actually is driving the Special Olympic vehicle that I will be riding in with athletes, and Tom Emery, one of our other coaches, will be coming earlier. Is it okay if Tom comes and gets the tickets? That's fine, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. No, that's why we can be really flexible. Um, it, uh, just let us know. I know in some cases, um, you won't name names, but in some cases, some areas may not want a particular coach to pick stuff up. <laughs> right. Oh, that's okay. why. 
But uh, if you want somebody other than your head coach to do it, that's fine. I'll make a note that Tom will be picking your stuff up. So. And the other question is that um, if you have an athlete that has um, a friend that um, of the family that's coming, uh, I get those tickets. I add that person uh, in as a number for the total tickets, and that person pays me, in turn, Special Olympics. The, he doesn't go to the front um, sales office, in other words. Right. For on, on this weekend, because it's a weekend and the volume of business they've got going through there, um, yeah, do not have any family members go through. Go, I mean, they can go through there, but they're not going to get the deal that we get. Okay, that, that's that answers my question. Go through through me and have them pay me, and I just adjust with our account. Right at Winter Games itself, where the volume is a little lower, uh, well, because it's it's a uh, Monday and Tuesday, they can go through that uh, through the main uh, ticket line. Uh, okay, thank you for everybody. That said, just so nobody is confused, there we are not taking money on site for any tickets. It's all getting filled back to your area. So, anybody else? Yes, Mike, this is Stu Wolf. Hey, Stu, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good, I have a question. The uh, prices, is that for the whole weekend, or is that for each day? That's for each day. That's for each day. For each day, okay. Yep. That's what we get charged, and that's, that's what we're passing on to you. Yep. Just wanted to make sure. Yep. Mike, Al Jank here. Hey, Al. Okay. I got a few questions. Uh, do we have any idea when Matt will have uh, gates set up on Saturday to practice running gates? Uh, hold on a sec. Um, I don't know if I got that printed out here or not. He gave me his. Okay, their crew. They're setting up the, uh, on Saturday, they're setting up, um, no, that can't be right. Looks like they're going to be doing it on Saturday around 10 o'clock. Approximately 10. Okay. okay that's now, wait, no, no, that's, what I'm saying is that's when they're going to get up there to start setting the course. Oh, approximately 10 to start setting up. Okay. Yeah, he does not have on here when they will be actually open. I would imagine... Just knowing uh, in the past, not keeping in mind they haven't set stuff for a year, or at least not for us, so it's always some rust to, to shake off. I would guess they would probably be available starting at 11. I'll see if I can get an answer uh, okay. with that. But All right, then. Uh, that's a guess. What, what was my, had a couple of other questions, although Mary Lou's question about families, that took care of one of my big questions. I knew I was going to get bombarded on that tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see. Uh, one other thing, when we, when we had the coaches uh, get together last month, we talked about how uh, uh, counties could go into GMS and use the comments field to let you guys know yep. uh, if we needed like visual guides or you know hearing you know extra uh, help for hearing impaired. And uh, I, I passed that along to Greg and. and he said that they weren't able to put any of that stuff in there. He said, now that we've got everybody registered, we might be able to. But as far as just, you know, putting, giving you the, the training roster that we gave you, you know, several weeks ago, they couldn't go back in and do that. Um, and my concern is, and, and I uh, shared this with Greg, and, and he was looking to go through channels to get an answer. I've got three visually impaired athletes. And with the size of our delegation and the limitation of four coaches, um, uh, it's um, going to be really hard for sure, us uh, to try to cover Al, uh, Al, all three of our uh, athletes and I might need some help with some visual guides. Al, um, just to, to uh, not to short circuit it, but I'm not sure why Greg had trouble because several other areas did put comments in. Okay. Um, if. Uh, uh, it looks like, however, unfortunately for the time trials, I'm going to have to copy the comments over there. They didn't transfer with stuff, but we at least got them in for the events. If you have that need, uh, please um, just send them on. If, if they didn't get in there, uh, send it on to Nick. And, Nick? Okay. Well, and do me a favor. Actually, copy me. Our uh, yeah. schedules with the plunge and rescheduling of all the IUS events and such. Um, uh, Nick's going all over God's creation this week. 
So copy me, and we'll just make sure that it gets in there. Now, question though, um, we would not be ourselves. Uh, the gains management team would not be providing the visual guide. Right. Okay. Okay. That'll be like something you, like through the adaptive program there, at whitetail perhaps, or or is that or is obtaining those guides going to be entirely uh, on us? That would be on you. We can certainly ask if the. Um, uh, the two top program has anybody available, but uh, again, on Saturday and Sunday, they have their own thing that's going. That okay. said, depending and, upon, uh, we may have enough volunteers. It uh, looks like sure. looking really good. Um, I just don't want to sit here and promise you that we'll have somebody. Okay. Well, if we need them, uh, are we going to get uh, penalized, for lack of a better term, and that's probably not the best uh, term, but I know that the cost for the delegation if we're staying within our quota with the coach to athlete ratio of one to three, if we have to get one or two more extra people because we need visual guides, are they going to be charged $180 for those uh, at winter come winter games? Are they going to get? Or is the county going to take an extra $60 a person hit because we we've, we've gone over that ratio? Uh, if it, if you're bringing additional people up, yeah, it would still it would it would yeah it would fall into that category. Um, so that said, uh, you know, if there's some kind of a really unique situation, talk, we can talk and see. But um, I, I, a lot of it's going to come down to what, you know, for, uh, for winter games, it's going to come down to what's the schedule, who's skiing when. Sure. Uh, because I've got uh, one and a half people committed uh, to it. And, uh, and, you know, if we've got to be at three places all at once, we're going to fail. Right. Um, I can't promise this, but if we know, uh, let's talk. We may be able to adjust the schedule to handle okay. that. We're not going to change who's in what division, but we right. there's a limited ability to shift this, you know, division A to the end of the intermediate slalom okay. uh, to adjust for that. So if yeah. and we yeah. put it at the track all the time. We do it. Uh, for similar reasons, uh, actually to get rid of time conflicts, but there's not a time yeah. conflict issue yeah. here. So we can look at that if we need to. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I know that two, two of my uh, visually impaired will be skiing intermediate. The other one, I think, is going to ski novice, um, but we're not sure yet. Sure. Uh, but because I'm not sure, I'd rather help her get off to a good, fun, successful start, put her in novice this year, and then if she can, if she's kicking butt, then, you know, we can move her up to intermediate next year. But uh, there might be a possibility that, you know, based on time trials, uh, we may have her do, uh, we may have her do the novice and then run, you know, if she feels like it, run right over to the intermediate and uh, see how she feels. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Always uh, additional challenges there. Yep. So... Okay, I will email you and Nick uh, and talk about our whole situation on this. Okay. And uh, and based on what you said earlier this evening, I'll have to email Nick because I just realized going back through my previous year's rosters and trying to unclutter my head that I accidentally signed up somebody for intermediate events even though he's an advanced skier. And so i got to make that change. But I have until, what, uh, next week to do that yeah, and, and it won't affect anything this weekend because they do the same yeah, time trial. because they're on the same course. Right. So. Okay. I believe that's all I have. Uh, if not, I'll wait till everybody else goes around and I'll ask for an alibi. Okay, sure. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, I want to clarify something that I just heard. The additional people above the allotment per coach athlete will be how much on Winter Games weekend? For Winter Games weekend, it's not it's it's your regular rate. We're not it's uh, since the the cost of the lift tickets and everything are being charged back to the area, and there's no housing. There's no extra charge for the um, the time trial snow. No Winter Games for Winter Games. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have to go back and look. I thought the estimate was 160. Al said 180. Yeah, I thought it was 162. That's why I'm asking. Okay, it could be. Yeah. It, it could very well have been. Yeah, I was okay. going more for the the principal than for the um, than the detail there. So, um, but yeah, and even that is an estimate. If it's lower, if it's if the real cost to us is lower, then it'll be lower. 
but but uh, you're saying it won't be over 160. Uh, I, yeah, based on everything that that I've seen and and the pricing and everything that we've got, no, it should not be any higher than 160. All right, thank you. And again, we'll we'll <coughs> we're not making any money. We're just passing the cost on. So uh, we'll make it as low as we can. Any other questions? I have one question. Um, I missed the first HOD webinar, so this is the first time I've heard um, that we have to go to the area director for the friends and family type of thing. And um, I was just wondering, so we, you can put in the friends or family in each day when you put it in for that survey monkey that we're going to do for yeah. the athletes and coaches? Yep. Okay, and then so each day is separate. So just get the numbers from the friends and family, and then just go from there. Yeah, hold on a second. Um, the uh, let me get back up to the. Your line has been muted. Your line has been unmuted. Sorry, somehow my line muted itself. Uh, just a second. Let's see if I can click through to that questionnaire. Yeah. So this is the this is, it's very simple. You put down what area you have, uh, name, email, and cell phone number, whether you're Alpine or Snowshoe, and then you just put in here on Saturday how many lunch tickets, how many lift tickets with rentals, and how many just lift tickets. Just put a number in. Uh, you can scroll and, and select the number, and then for Sunday you do the same thing. Uh, whatever you don't use, you can turn back in. Okay. Okay. That is. Yeah, that, that, that's great. And then you said it's twenty dollars for the. I just, I'm sorry, it's tw I'm on my cell phone. Um, it's twenty dollars for lift and an additional thirty for the rental, correct? No, it's twenty dollars for the lift, and it's thirty dollars for lift plus rental. They don't do. They used to do a, a separate lift ticket from a rental ticket. Now they have. If you just want a lift, you buy a lift ticket. If you want the rental with the lift, you buy it together for thirty. And again, as a reminder, anything you don't use, get it back to us by uh, look at one o'clock. We may be able to stretch it to two, um, but we can uh, we can turn those back in each day and get um, and not get charged. And we'll keep track of that as well. So, any other questions? I know everybody's chomping at the bit to get to the um, to the Iowa caucus uh, results. So, uh, either that or the end of the X Files. So. Hey, Mike. Real quick, this is Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Um, um, I think we're okay on Sunday. Okay. For for this weekend, we certainly would could use some folks at Winter Games because it's during the week. Right. Um, I, would, I was typically about my nephew, and he'd be in school Monday, Tuesday, but yeah, he'd be um, available for Sunday. Um, t uh, let me check with Jeff Abel. Jeff is our um, our uh, new, and I mean he started back in uh, I think August, uh, but uh, overseas volunteers now. Um, I, I think it's 16. Uh, we can go lower than that with a parent or guardian present. Go down to typically 14. Usually don't go below that, other than in um, uh, extreme cases or where we have you know groups coming in together. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I think between the different schools uh, who bring folks out um, on the weekend, I think we're covered. But uh, I'll ask Jeff. And uh, he can get back to you then. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Mike? Yes. On here. Remember the little eight year old athlete that we're trying this year and the non standard size for the shoes? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that gets to Ron. The, the other thing is, it's not only are they non standard size, they look like little bare feet. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but that's what we could find to, that fit her little, that fit her little feet. Okay. Well, well, Ron's aware. Of, excuse me. Ron's aware of it because we had that conversation at distance running. But that's I'll right. Him. I'll, I'll remind him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks a lot. Sure. Thanks. Have a good trip, uh, John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Any other questions? Yeah, Mike, this is Al again. I, I just thought of one uh, <laughs> talking about the volunteers and stuff like that. If I've got friends and family members that, that are available and want to volunteer, or in, in this particular case that I'm thinking of, volunteer again to work at Winter Games, um, should they contact uh, somebody up there at state or uh, if, a website to go to? Or yeah, for winter games, uh, they can go to the uh, uh, SOMD website, and okay. Jeff's got that all set up there for folks uh, to register online there. Okay. Yeah, is there still like a volunteer tab or a, uh, something on the home page that you can click on that says volunteer? Yeah. Uh, no, watch. I'll go here, and it's I will fail miserably. Um, Okay, that's what I thought. Um, there may also be, in addition to that, uh, a thing down below. So opportunities, if he's got this set up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, this can go. It's in a bit of a of a flux only because um, we're trying to get everything to handle online. But actually, yeah, actually, if they go through the online volunteer portal. Yeah. That'll take okay. through the whole process, uh, and uh, after they do that, they'll then have the opportunity to sign up for um, a uh, uh, a role at an event. But that gets them yeah. all their screening done, all that type of stuff taken care of. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, I'm just thinking about uh, Ed Burlett, who's helped out with uh, uh, entering uh, race times um, into the computers and everything that he's done for two or three years in a row, and, and I'm not sure if he has already been notified by somebody begging him to come back again or, or what. But uh, Does he do that for Alpine or for Snowshoe? Uh, Alpine. Really? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Patrick O'Brien handles that aspect. We can, I can ask him if he's, uh, if he's uh, already reached out to him or not. Okay. All right, then. Sounds good. And Patrick's pretty... Um, um, conscientious about that kind of stuff, so my guess sure. probably has. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, if not, again, thank you much. Uh, we'll send these slides out uh, with a link to the recording, uh, so on down the line, uh, likely tomorrow morning. Uh, and then tomorrow evening, uh, that will go out mass. Uh, to folks tomorrow evening. Each county will get um, their rosters uh, of the uh, time trial events. When you get those rosters, just as a heads up, it'll put it in the email as well. It's only going to be their time trial events. It's not going to list all of their different other events as well. Um, we'll send that out under separate care. We want to make sure we got the time trial stuff all taken care of, though, um, since that's the most pressing thing. Um, that said, thanks again. I uh, look forward to seeing everybody on uh, Saturday uh, or definitely on Sunday. And um, um, have a great rest of your evening. Thanks. Great.